permission to speak. Shadows hide you. I am listening. Our paths converge. So good to see you. Hail to you. Never lose hope. Here, friendship. I hear you. It has only begun. Fight on, friend. Hello and welcome to episode 422 of Coin Concede, a Hearthstone podcast dedicated to making the competitive side of the game more accessible to you. It is Friday, sorry, it is Thursday, <laughs> November 16th, 2023 in the afternoon. Coming to you from Nomergan, Ohio, it's me, Edelweiss. From North Red, Massachusetts, we have Wicked Good. Hi. From Teldrassil, California, we have Megesa. Hello. And from all around the world, we have you, dear listeners. As always, thank you for your kind reviews. If you would like to support the show but cannot do so monetarily, please consider leaving us a five-star review on your podcast feed of choice. So, we finally have Showdown in the Badlands, not just theory crafting. We can do away with that pesky 10-card rule. Although, I feel like some of my decks do a, a just fine, even with that rule. I don't know. What, what have you all been playing? Well... You want you go you go first, Megasa, because you've had probably the most eventful week out of the three of us. So <laughs> I have had a very eventful week, yes. So I decided I really wanted to be part of the traditional day one marathon stream. And in order to do that, I needed to actually have a stream. So <laughs> then I thought, well, I shouldn't make that be my first one. So I'll just do like a test stream first. But then we were like, well. What if there were giveaway packs? <laughs> and then Hat retweeted my tweet about it. And then suddenly there were more giveaway packs. And then I got a raid from Jombre. Thank you very much, Jombre. Uh, so it was not a very little test stream. <laughs> there was uh, something like 115 people at one point. So that was a lot. And it was it was really fun. And there were definitely a few glitches. Uh, I think really one major glitch and then other stuff worked mostly fine. Um, but I did have a good time theory crafting and playing Undead Priest, which was a good first thing to play. And then I uh, was able to do a more relaxed stream as part of the, the day one streams, mostly more relaxed because I knew what I was doing. Um, I thought I had tested everything, but of course, had I actually tested everything? No, I had not tested everything. Always you, test you, everything. I've been doing this for like five years. I still haven't tested everything. Like <laughs> it is, it is actually impossible to, it's impossible to test everything. And it's very easy to break something that you've tested and done a million times and still mess it up. Like it amazes me the different ways that a stream can break and the ways that you can mess things up. So I'm actually proud that I figured out how to do a giveaway in the middle of the stream <laughs> while I was playing. Did that make me do some misplays? Probably, but <laughs> that's what we'll blame it on. Any, any losses are just due to that trying to run the stream. So, uh, but it, it was really fun. I had a blast on the day one stream, uh, both being in your streams in hat stream and playing myself. And I mean, we'll talk about, I'm just really enjoying this expansion so far. And it was really fun to be able to share that with people. And I started with the, a, a modified version of the Naga Priest from the Theory Crafting, this time without 10 Badlands cards, because it turns out it is better if you are not running Brewmaster, that uh, YouTube short that we uploaded aside, <laughs> where it came in handy. <laughs> yeah. It's better if you don't run it. But the... The Naga Priest is, is, is doing okay for me. Uh, and I decided to cut Handmaiden because she's only active if you already have Wig, but you need to draw mostly only if you don't have Wig. So while she could be good in the late game if you gas out, mostly at that point I was like, well, you should have you should have won by now. So I replaced Handmaiden with Treasure Guards. Uh, and... Just otherwise, it's a pretty similar list. And the only spells you're running are Wig, Funnel Cake, and One Shard of the Naru. 
which is quite good in this current meta. If they have dragon golems, you're just like, nope, go face. So that actually works pretty well. And that means that with the banker, you're guaranteed to find wig as long as you don't play it the turn you draw it. You actually usually don't want to do the quick draw on it, even though it is the grief move, because the quick draw you <laughs> get from your opponents, unless you already have a wig. <laughs> you just or, need or, or a wig. Or if you're me, you want if you're me, you want to do it, but you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> And I was pleasantly surprised. You can often get double wigs. That's pretty easy to do. And you can still do a fair bit of mana cheating. So you can't get near, you're unlikely to do the like from 30 dead thing that you used to sometimes do with older Naga Priest when we had Radiant Elemental and Bless. But you still have Pelagos. You still have Funnel Cakes. You still have Lady, uh, you still have Valish. And you can duplicate all of those things. So I did have one where without Pelagos, I got like 20 plus damage in one turn, at least, which would have been enough to kill them if they hadn't snaked me the previous turn. And then they did double <laughs> snake on turn eight because they had gotten the two coin treasure and played that out. I like knew I was dead, but I played everything out anyway, just to just to show them that I could have killed them if they hadn't snaked me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. Um, I've been playing some overheal priest. I think that deck has promise, but it's really hard to play. There's a yep. lot of lines, and it's often hard to know when should you hold back and try to do a Cavaldier damage combo. When do you just want to tempo stuff out? Um, do you want to be greedy to try to hold things for Heartbreaker or not? So I haven't done super well with it, but I'll, I'm, I'm not ready to say it's the deck yet. I think it might just be I don't know how to play it. Uh, I played some buff paladin. We'll talk about that. I think that's, I mean, that's a really the, sort of the aggro buff paladin. That new aura is really good. And uh, so is the Hi-Ho Silverwing, which also has the best name in the set. Actually, Fracking has the best name in the set, but it has the second best name. <laughs> and Naga Demon Hunter, we'll talk more about, but I really enjoy. That was my favorite deck to play in the theory crafting. Not, not theory crafting, in the day one stream. Uh, it just... As long as you draw the sharpshooter, which we'll talk about also, the uh, No Hands Gamer posted a list today that has Magnifying Glaive. And I was watching a replay that Hat did with that, and that seemed really promising, actually, because it lets you like play your cards while you're waiting to get the sharpshooter, because you'll just draw back up to three. So that seemed good. But if you draw your sharpshooter, you can just do so much damage so early. And five health on the sharpshooter is so much, it just lives. Like, if you just tempo it out, like, it just lives. <laughs> Gee, I, wait, are you telling me that a three mana five health minion is sticky? Because I I don't know when we, we would have learned that, like, except for every every standard year since standard's been a thing, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it sticks around. Yeah. I had one game where my opponent had been winning board against me. I was pretty low health, so I had to play out both sharpshooters just to clear their board. But then they couldn't clear either. So they're at 30, and I just... And it was like turn six, or maybe even turn five. It was really early, and I just blasted them down. They had 30 health and a board. Didn't matter, because I had stuck them, so I didn't have to pay the mana for them in that turn. So uh, it's... I, my win rate hasn't been as insane with it today as it was yesterday, but I am definitely still enjoying that deck. And I've been trying lots of different things uh, as much as I can. Uh, Sludge Warlock not working as well as I would have liked it to work because I and I refuse to play it with snakes. So, did, did you <laughs> which play? Is objectively did you, incorrect. Did you play the 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 five head version? There. Which, the which one that the I said so the one that I made hat play was as soon as I raided him on on Tuesday so there's there's have you there's a sludge warlock that was made by a Chinese player this the one where you looked at it and said oh there's a death wing and I and I said there's more yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually this, just running death wing yeah it's so it's hard running death wing first of all because you know why not you're getting a bunch of sludges in your hand and then death wing clears the board and makes them all go face seems good it's got a silver moon arcanist which never even occurred to me when we were building it for theory crafting because like okay why should we do three damage with sludges when we can do five um but it runs furnace fuel and tome tampering 
Furnace and... Fuel was good. <laughs> when Hat yeah. was playing it, I was like, Furnace Fuel was solid. <laughs> and the tone tampering worked better than I would have guessed. <laughs> yeah. So, so tone tampering, if you've been able to forget, and how would you remember? Because it, you know, unless you played like duels, is a three mana spell that says discard your hand and shuffle one mana copies of all your cards into your deck. So, what happens is that you discard all your sludges and then you have more sludges in your deck, which is why you're hard running a steam cleaner in the deck to blow all of, all of those up eventually. Because why wouldn't you? But because you have Furnace Fuel, Furnace Fuel is a four mana card that says whenever this is played, destroyed, or discarded, draw two cards. So you now Tome Tampering isn't as bad if you have that in your hand because then you can refill. And also, uh, it also runs Scourge Supplies, which effectively turns that into the draw four concoction if you hit the Furnace Fuel as one of the three because then it draws two, draws three, discards Furnace Fuel, draws two more. So you can turbo through the deck, and if you're generating enough, getting enough sludges in hands, tome tampering, sending them all into the deck, blowing them up, theoretically, if you are really good at Hearthstone, which apparently I am not, <laughs> then, then, then you get to kill your opponent. I it's It seems like it's got like a lot of like really, really cool ideas in it, and I've tried it a bit, and I could not get it to work, but it seemed really fun. And maybe, you know, after when when it's the when it's not the second best thing to do in Warlock, maybe that'll uh, that'll be something. <laughs> but that 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 was not the most surprising deck that I played this week because I was not expecting to say the sentence. I got to legend with Ogre Priest today, but here we are. So. There's a player named Mills, and I think he might have gotten it from another Chinese player as well, but where you basically are playing 30-card Warlock with all of the Ogres, all the Ogre Gang. So <laughs> you run you run all the Ogre Gang. You have Animate Dead for because the only minion that costs three or less is the three-cost Ogre. So you get more of those, and then you can get, uh, you can get extra uh, Kingpin Puds with creation protocol and power court synchronize so you just keep slamming puds in the late game what i mean that's it, you have to get to the late game but you have all the control tools to get you there you're running shard of the nari you're running light of burns you're running clean the scene you're running identity theft i'm not really sold on i think that maybe we could use something that's a little bit more more defensive it's running uh like an etc with uh i think it's it's theotar shadow word ruin and i forget what the other oh it might be steam cleaner i'm not sure uh, what the third card is because i've only ever used the theotar and the ruin um but the 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 theotar did get me to legend because i played against the snake warlock and they took their time doing their excavates and then i took their snake and they conceded um <laughs> but you can just like get all these boards of ogres that all just keep charging face and and it it's it's actually kind of hilarious so i i played a little bit more once i hit legend i haven't really done as well with it um since then, I'm not sure if it's actually a thing or if it was just something that was taking people by surprise, you know, when I was climbing to Legend, but I don't really care. It was fun, and I got to say I got to Legend with Ogre Priest, so <laughs> here here we are. <laughs> well, there's a lot there that I want to try, both that Ogre Priest and the Sludge Warlock sound like a lot of fun, but... I stayed up way later than I should have because I got addicted to a deck I made. And, of course, the games are a bit longer because it's Blood DK. Oh, no. <laughs> so this will us. be a, a good transition in, into our news in a minute. But <clears throat> uh, as uh, some of you listeners may be aware, I have loved Blood Decay and have been appalled at the 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 renathalness of it since uh, since that card came out and and uh, how it's it's you know fallen off in win rate. You just haven't been able to deal with certain inevitability win conditions like you know Sargeras recently and, and uh, we just got the nest. But now I have an answer to to 
you know, things that would otherwise be a problem. And that is Reno. So I have, uh, you know, it, it took a little bit to refine, but I finally built a list that I'm, I'm really happy with. And I was just hunting snakes. Like it, it was, <laughs> it was so fabulous because now it's it's not to say I had like a hundred percent win rate against that guy. There were times that I lost because uh, usually because of Doomkin, because yeah. that on curve makes it just like really hard to keep like, up. That's just adding insult to injury at that point. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, that I, I was kind of horrified at the direction that lists took. Like I thought <laughs> it was gonna be all about just turbo snakes and and when people refined the snake list, it got just really savage where they were like, nope, double doomkin because we want to get to those high mana numbers so we can go Sargeras. And it's just this, you know, double threat thing of like, yeah, you've got to deal with these boards. And also there's a snake coming that's going to get bounced. And, you know, sometimes just turboing into a, an early, like, uh, Gary is, you know pretty devastating as well like that deck has a ton That's of huge. threats the way it, it got refined and uh so yeah i i did drop a couple games but largely i was able to because excavates tell you when the thing that you're trying to rat is there <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I had you know one rat and theatar in the main deck and then a, an extra rat in the etc I had an extra uh, uh, Soul Stealer in the ETC. And then the only thing that I ran two of in the deck otherwise is Vampiric Blood. Because if you Vampiric Blood, it buys you more time because they need extra <laughs> snakes to actually kill you. So I, it just... And, and that was kind of where the idea started was like, well, if we can buy time with Vampiric Bloods, like they need more than just playing it three times. And uh, it it was just some of very fun games of this back and forth of like I gain ten life they steal ten, uh, but that signals okay now's the time to rat and of course being blood we have patchwork right which is a whole other way of uh, being able to hit it. <laughs> I and love this so journey for you so much. And 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 you know <laughs> they they never expect the the Reno to clear their portal because who does. <laughs> people haven't seen a blood dk in like six you, months you learn you learn from the reno from the the reno burgle rogue <laughs> yeah <laughs> just taking by surprise with reno who would guess except they were renathal as well yeah uh not, none of that over here yeah and it it just you know it, i just love it when a plan comes together and i i hit legend <laughs> with that deck i i don't have the stats because these days, most of my playtime has to be on the iPad. And just because my computer is in the basement and I don't really bring the baby down here. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a journey. And now that I've hit Legend, I'm like, all right, well, I probably, I probably should try other decks. <laughs> and... That is the perfect Edelweiss deck, though. And like, I stopped. I stopped seeing the snake warlocks. I think because people are are out for blood against them, and because uh, you know it's not long for this world. So, yeah. Wicked, why don't you uh, take us into the news? Yeah, why don't we do that? Oh, oh my god! My no, I'm an idiot. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it that uh, time at least. Let's do it. This let's do this one instead. Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. Okay, so uh, we have kind of talked around our uh, reptilian friend who is getting the boot, not the snake in... It was a snake in my boot, and now it's just getting the boot. So, so... Whoops. No, that's not it. There we go. So, uh, that's not the thing either. Sorry about that. So we got an announcement uh, yesterday, uh, th which would be Wednesday of this week, from Gallon. There was a tweet. Howdy, partners. Hope you all are enjoying the first few days of Showdown in the Badlands. We're planning on a hotfix nerf for the Azerite Snake as it's a clear sentiment outlier. 
more details to come Friday. Uh, smiley face with a cowboy hat, as, as is appropriate. So uh, I, we talked about this a fair amount last week after theory crafting that it felt like if this deck was not dead on arrival that it was not going to be long for this world and uh it seems like we were correct we probably all could have just picked this as our actual card to be scared of and been very vindicated but uh yeah it, it's it's not and and oh some folks are getting a little bit hung up on sentiment outlier uh, the phrase that that was used and i know that hat's been in our ridiculous hat has been in our discord and other discords a lot the last day or so and has repeatedly pointed out that just because something is a sentiment outlier does not mean it's all, not also a power outlier but it also is just feels really bad to play against and you know i've been playing some uh slower decks like i i spent some time with excavate warrior uh, you know, because I heard it was good and it is fine, but you know, sometimes you just don't hit the stink or you don't get the, the right thing to pull or you can't get your boom boss down early enough to blow it up or whatever. Right. And so having a deck that just kind of gets to a point where halfway through, you know, how it's going to end and you can't really do anything about it. If you're playing a certain kind of deck does get kind of old and, uh, they, there's been some criticism, as of, you know, when the mini set came out of the team not reacting quickly enough uh, with with Yogg. And so I think they're kind of moving more in this other direction. And of course, like, it really doesn't matter what you do. There's going to be people who are generally angry with you. And I've seen a lot of sentiment here. But I think ultimately, like, we can wait for these decks to get refined, to get more degenerate. But if we know that there's an issue especially knowing that Thanksgiving is coming up in the United States next week. So the, the, the windows to make a change are pretty limited until two weeks out. I think leaning on the side of this was already busted in theory crafted and theory crafting and it's busted. It, it seems overrepresented, if not overpowered in ladder on live that let's just do something about it before it gets a chance to get even more degenerate. And then, push out a lot of the cool things that you can do in this expansion. Yeah, I think it's the idea of whether it's meta warping that might be the biggest issue. I mean, I'm speculating, but that I mean, Mad at Arms over here saying, I like that they had Snake because it pushed people to refine and play aggro. But, you know, they have these this these Reno decks that are mostly slower decks. And the main way to do that successfully is or play slower deck successfully is to do something like the highly disruptive blood decay. And that's not necessarily where we want slower decks to be. <laughs> I'm glad you had that experience, but <laughs> overall it's not necessarily where we want slower decks to be. So I think, you know, generally it's best for them to see where things are going to land before nerfing. So I'm glad they didn't try to hit a bunch of things, but you know, especially um, they can see many more stats than we can, especially this early uh, if it's really warping the meta, as well as having, you know, most of the reactions that I've seen have been like, good, get out on the snake. Uh, <laughs> so it, it, I think it has been a sentiment outlier, as well as a power outlier and a potential meta warper. Again, it's hard, you know, we don't really have the same kind of data that they do, but they have definitely seen in the past that like snap nerfs are not always the right decision. So I, I think they're being thoughtful about it yeah and to go back to like the sentiment outlier part like it it's definitely powerful and i'm sure the stats show that but it is like i kind of described predictable right like the things it is going to do are telegraphed because you know when they have the snake and so you know when to go for whatever you need to go for to to keep them from playing it right if you're like, okay, I need to make my big push here as an aggro turn because I can't give them time to play the snake or, or whatever. Uh, or in, in my case, all right, here's where I need to go for rat or patchwork. But as you go lower down the ladder, people are not able to exploit those kinds of things as well. It's it's just just like when 
you know, more linear decks like, a, you know, an Elemental Shaman or a Pure Paladin are very, very strong, right? Just because something's predictable, if it's a certain amount of powerful that can be overwhelming for people to deal with, it just is is hard. So even though, you know, where where I'm at, my MMR bracket, I, like, stopped even really seeing much Snake Warlock because people are doing other stuff. I mean, Jambre hit very, I think, 17 Legend with this deck by Molino that is a cleave, like, buff hunter, right? That Where deck you, looks crazy. It, he it's, went it's 27 nuts. and 2. It was filthy, right? <laughs> and, uh, like, that's that's really out there when, when you think of what people are talking about. So there's a lot of development. It's been four days. Uh, I do think this, it has to be a fast change be, because, as you say, of... Uh, you know, American Thanksgiving coming up, but I do kind of wonder what is being held down by snakes, right? Like, they've definitely made a push for slower decks, and I think Warrior in particular, like, is going to make a big comeback in a post-snake world because their armor is functional again, right? Like, <laughs> if they no longer have to worry about getting triple snaked, then we get to see a lot of Excavate Odin Warrior, which I expect to be fairly powerful. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, so those have been being held back. Uh, to some extent, I feel like certain, you know, like the Highlander Druids haven't been able to do much because they're also an armor class. Like, there's a lot of you know, maybe just slow enough decks that were like, well, I just I just lose to Snake that uh, maybe will kind of come into the floor. And people don't always like those slower metas. Now, I don't know if Snake was holding down any aggro decks. I feel like aggro was kind of the thing you, you wanted to do against them uh, to some extent, or at least a, a certain kind of aggro, because... Their clears were Gigafin and Sargeras in terms of the really big stuff. So if you could play around Defile well enough, then they 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 have to patch together all their clears. So uh, that's that's another example of something that players at lower ranks are less likely. You know, playing around Defile is really tricky. I think for anyone. Uh, so you know, that's another place where aggro may be struggling more as well at other rank brackets. Yeah. yeah. But I yeah. think that, like, the, the snake deck was winning often around the, like, 10, turn 10. I guess sometimes mana 10 because of Doomkin. But, uh, and Sif Mage can do that. Naga Dage can win well before that. Well before that. <laughs> right, yeah. so... I I just I don't have as much of the hatred for it, but I also recognize that like something has to be done because it's warping. What I'm hoping is that whatever change they make doesn't completely kill it, because I I do think the armor piercing of it all is is really cool. And we talked about this last week, but it it just does a little too much. So I'm I guess I'm hoping they either turn down the damage a little bit, like just so it takes one extra time. So uh, I guess that would be down to eight. Um, or because if you do it down to seven, then you need two extra times. So and it's a five. Make them then do it's extra then it's damage. worthless. Then it is no, it's not worthless. It's not no. worthless. It's it makes it, the, it makes them have other card. damage. Yeah, it does. No, that Good. makes it an aggro deck instead of a control deck, right? Like, then it is five burn, and it may as well not take it away from their max, right? Um, Most of the excavate are more controly tools. I think, and it, it is very likely to, right? I mean, since it's a hot fix, it's not going to be a text. It's numbers only. Text it's numbers change. only. It, it has to hot be numbers fixes only. Are, hot fixes are always, num are, I, I believe, are always numbers only, because they can't. So, yeah. They don't have that kind of freedom to be able to actually change like the, the they can't they can change a number on a card 
through the server, but they can't actually change the text on it without sending a new card into the client. Okay, which means they're they're not going to, unless they, I mean, this would... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, I, unless they did a weird thing where they're like, uh, well, you have to you have to know to know, but if they they're did the thing where that. it just does, it still does 10, but you don't gain the life, I think that yeah. would be a a meaningful change, like a big weakness, because they're, they're so much more vulnerable and you would still have the current kind of armor killer element that, that makes it so unique and, and, and I think fun. Um, but yeah, I, I basically hope that they don't go lower than eight because yeah. I think lower than eight just kills the card and there's no point in being armor piercing if you can't actually do it enough to to kill someone through the armor, yeah. right? Um, I mean, I my I mean, we talked about this last week too. Like, I feel like the other the other act legendary excavates are all more value engines that help you win the game, but don't win the game outright. And but, I feel like that's that's kind of where that needs to be. And we can talk about you know five or eight. Like, we can both have our preferences. It doesn't really matter. We'll find out when they announce it tomorrow. And we right. we may not be getting the patch tomorrow. They just said there's going to be more details tomorrow. I would like to think tomorrow being Friday. So by the time you're hearing this. You will know more than we do when we're talking about this. Um, but I, I do think that one of the things that's important to think about when they're talking about a sentiment outlier is that we are, as engaged players, are like a, a, an overrepresented group. And there are a lot of people who they are enticing to come back with this expansion, with catch up packs, with a BlizzCon announcement, with, a, with one of the coolest themes that they've had in a while. Right, I guess mm -hmm. it's it's up there with Festival of Legends, but like they really knocked it out of the park with the artwork, with the theming, the, with the BlizzCon announcements, with the catch up pack. There are a lot of people coming back. If those people are coming back and queuing into, okay, well, I'm just gonna ignore everything you're doing and bounce this bounce this thing and then kill you. And armor doesn't help and healing doesn't help. Like then they're gonna close the client and not come back. Right, like you you have to think of it from that perspective too. So even if it's not a power outlier at the levels that most people who are listening to this podcast are around at much lower levels. And, and there are always going to be people who get through like, you know, the, the beginner track and then get into like, you know, finally get into bronze 10 and then get a rude awakening when they start queuing into meta decks. And that could be a real big exit point. So I think that addressing that quickly is probably a good thing and yeah like the the only number that you're going to change on that card is going to be the damage that it does right because like the cost right. is going to be four yeah. no matter what like the the the, the stats of the body don't matter because it doesn't stay on the board anyway so it's really the only number that matters on the card is the number of damage that it does that's so pretty clear that that's what they're going to have to do but we just don't know what that number is going to be and and depending on what they change that number two is going to change the deck in different ways yeah and i just think anything anything less than eight <laughs> kills the card and yeah. at that point there's just no reason to play excavate warlock because mm. the the excavate cards are, are not aggressive cards right they they just aren't and you know you can get some good value out of the uh the stuff along the way right like i actually don't even want the reward in rogue i just want the stuff along the way so i, I just run truly the kid in, in my miracle rogue but I, I mean, I guess at that point it becomes like a, a scuffed vampiric blood, like because you gain, you know, if you were to gain five or something. Like, I, I certainly it does certainly doesn't seem worth bouncing. And like, no, just, yeah. the the slight changes in number here is make just a, a very big difference, and and I think it's a little, um, I don't know. It, just because the other uh, tier four rewards aren't necessarily win conditions in and of themselves does not mean that one of them can't be. And like they certainly sure, sure. are in certain yeah. ways, right? And they're devoting a huge amount of their deck to make it a win condition, right? They're running, right. all the lists I've seen are running four Brewmasters and Zola. <laughs> so <laughs> that is. <laughs> you know, five out of 30 cards in your deck. And, 
you know, if, if they need even one more bounce, that makes it a, a little more fragile in terms of being able to to disrupt and everything. But I, I just think anything, anything less than eight is just going to be worthless for playing because the stealing doesn't, just doesn't, it takes away the cool part of the card for me, I guess, is, yeah. is if uh, if you can't kill people through the armor anymore. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what they do, but it's, I think that the deck as it is, it, it's problematic and like, it's it. The people have described it as a quest deck without actually affecting your mulligan. Yeah, right. Which it is. and and you it know, is. depending on. Depending on how you felt about Stormwind, will probably be a pretty good barometer for how you feel about that deck. And, I actually, yeah. I played Quest Mage day one of Stormwind. It was like the only expansion ever where I just like crushed it on day one of an expansion. I I did pretty well on on my day one stream, but I got in on the ground floor on Quest Mage, and especially at the MMR I was at the time, people just like did not know what to do for at least the first 24 hours. Like they just played all their minions right into your frost spells and you were like, thank you. And then just kept going. <laughs> it was gross and I loved it. And I actually really loved Stormwind in general, but I also think that this is, you know, making it just a little bit harder uh, because of the way that it plays and not just, you know, it's not actually that fast. But they have a lot of controlling tools and it feels really bad as a slower deck unless you are like really disruptive. And I selfishly don't want to queue into all those really disruptive things. I mean, I got plague spreader in my Naga Priest. Like they got my they got my Pelagos with a plague spreader. spreader. Wow. <laughs> Somebody I, really hates it. Holy cow. I also <laughs> faced two Reno priests in a row and they both got the perfect e Elise. Like they they didn't draw patches, they got Yog and Amonthul, and Blackwater Behemoth, and uh, one of them was also running Rivendare. Uh, yeah, let's <laughs> I was like, go. how did you not draw patches? And then the second, the next person I faced in a row did the same thing. I was like, oh my gosh! Yeah. But I'm sorry, like, I am derailing this. <laughs> like, like, but real talk, like I have, I, I have not crafted Elise yet. Because there's because there's not much point in playing it right now, right? With this going around, because like I know how those games are gonna go, and I know what it's gonna do. It's I know it's gonna end my session for the day, right? When it happens. So like I haven't even crafted a lease. Uh, I didn't open it, and I didn't. I oh, I got Reno with like my level twenty reward track legendary. So I haven't actually gotten to try that deck that I'm looking forward to. But it's like I'll just wait a day or two, and I'll play ogres instead, and it's fine. But. Um, but we, there is actually other non snake related news, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> um, there are a lot of shop updates, uh, that are, that are there that, and some of the bundles are ones that you may want to look at. And some are ones that if you have a friend that's getting into the game that are worth them looking at in particular for newer players with low collection, there is a Badlands catch up starter bundle which is 15 catch-up packs for $5, which has got to be one of the best deals in this game ever. Easily. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially for somebody with a low collection where those those packs are going to have, you know, 25, 30, 35 cards in them if they've already opened some of them. So, like, that's... Or, or if they haven't opened anything, I mean, 50, pack, 50 cards times 15 packs is a really good way to get going. So if you have somebody who's like newer returning, make sure to point them to that because you won't see that in your shop. If you are somebody who has most of the collection, that's not going to show up for you. That's only going to show up for newer players. So be aware of that. And if you have friends that you're trying to get back into the game, um, there is also the Elise the Leader bundle. I did buy this because of course I did um, with the Elise the Leader portrait and Elise, Elise card back and five freeze packs for $15 or 1500 runestones. There is a diamond flint firearm. Flint firearm is the neutral uh, three mana three three battle cry. Get a random quick draw card if you play it this turn. Repeat this. Um, so that is coming with that and a signature Badlands card and a signature Titans card. So that's for fifty dollars or five thousand runestones. Um, there's also the Saloon Denathrius bundle, which is just the Saloon Denathrius um, portrait 
for warrior and five pack five warrior packs for ten dollars or a thousand rune stones also uh ragnaros is back in the shop as a shaman hero portrait for a thousand uh thousand gold or uh ten dollars or i think seven dollars i believe uh so if you miss ragnaros the first time you can go and get him um there are also uh known issues there boy <laughs> howdy are there no are there known issues and that i mean Lots that's, of them that's will kind probably of... sorry <laughs> no go ahead Lots of them will probably be fixed in the hotfix, which could be as early as tomorrow or it could be uh, early next week. So, uh, but yes, there's there's quite a few. Uh, I I put a few in the in the show notes to highlight. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we're not again. We're we're trying to keep the list. That, you know, we don't want this to be a read the a read the errata podcast. So we're gonna keep it to the ones that are that are significant. Um. But uh, one of them is that reliquary re researcher needs to organize her desks. She can sometimes research up a secret you already control, re resulted in two secrets not being played. Um, so that's uh, that's a weird one. Um, there are a bunch of bugs around Reno, so which are, <laughs> is kind of to be expected because this whole high noon effect is not something that we've had in the game before and there's a lot of potential interactions with it so there are problems with anachronos where anachron some of the sometimes you get all the minions back sometimes you get some of the minions back sometimes you don't get the right minions back whatever um there's dirty rats can still pull two minions onto the the, the high noon board which is weird also so there's a like if if you've seen something weird with a reno but a reno board state they know about it. They may not know about every permutation, but they're trying to fix it, and they're hopefully going to be p fixing a bunch of those in the hotfix that's coming. Um, the uh, showdown in the, leg the Badlands legendary achievement is stuck at 26 of 22nd. Hold your horses on disenchanting legendary cards. We'll get this sorted. So if you are... <laughs> the, the main reason that you care about that is getting the diamond legendary that's associated with it. So um, just just you know be patient with that, and that'll get fixed soon. Um, they're investigating reports that reroll prompts are not appearing when expected. They're sometimes being delayed until the next pack opening. So if you didn't get a reroll, uh, you know, you can go open a pack or even just like log out of the client, log back in. That worked for me as well. Um, and that, that should fix it. Um, and a, a funny one is some players are seeing incorrect text such as glue and bacon in the client after a new installer update. It appears that closing the client and reopening it after the update is, has finished, resolved this problem. Uh, those are, I believe, just placeholder text that they put in when they... So they they have, I believe, and I don't I don't work on the client, but just knowing how some of the stuff works in the back end, like, I believe that those are just, like, placeholders. They're looking it up out of a database, and if they don't hit anything, then that's just kind of, like, the default value, I think. <laughs> Something like that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not... Again, I haven't seen that code. I don't know anything specifically but just knowing knowing when that stuff tends to show up that that seems likely to me how that's happening and bacon is just developers like to keep themselves entertained when they're programming you have and to so, do something you know so you know bacon bacon's delicious it's also a great placeholder i guess uh and uh there have been a few more anomalies and uh mr bigglesworth hero that are removed from battlegrounds because of bugs, the the anomaly hokey pokey continues and will continue until morale improves. <laughs> so um, another thing that happened uh, that they had mentioned in the patch notes last week that there was going to be a change to mercenaries XP and then people kept playing mercenaries after the patch and saw that the uh the xp had not changed and that change went live with the expansion not with the patch so it went according to ben hearthstone it was around 200 xp for a 30 minute game of mercenaries and now it's 30 xp so <laughs> one xp per minute is not a great rate for your time but you know you do you uh, whatever you want to do with that information is up to you, but be aware that that actually has happened 
in case you were looking to be trying to use mercenaries to uh to move forward so um we also speaking of mercenaries and other game modes we got a uh some stats from firestone around a uh, number of hours played per game mode per day and uh trying to i'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger on the stream just so that you get like axes because it, it offends my sensibilities as a as, as someone who <laughs> works in analytics to show a, a chart without axes um but long story short they they saw a really big jump in arena uh when the patch went live with the new cards and and they saw that also when titans launched and what's interesting about that jump is that, like, you would expect that they would have a big jump and then they said the set would go live and it would go back down to where it was. And it actually maintained probably about 50% of that jump after Titans went live. Um, and then it jumped even higher to above standard uh, when, when the Badlands uh, patch went live with the new cards in Arena. So that was a pretty interesting... Uh, interesting look it's also the twist line if you're looking on the stream uh or if you're you know looking at this link in the show notes there's a line at the bottom that's like neon green that it dips out completely for a month that's how you know it's twitch and it looks like you know every medical drama the 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 heart monitor because <laughs> it just like it it has a big surge in in September, and then it drops down and drops down below mercenaries PVE for most of September and the rest of its time. Now, Oof. worth mentioning, there are some sample size issues with Firestone. They have they they do have more representation in some modes than others, uh, particularly battlegrounds and mercenaries because their tracker does more. In those modes so they may have more of the remaining hangers on of mercenaries than say hearthstone deck tracker does and i don't know that this would necessarily mirror the the official stats but uh like we were looking at that the the decision to put twist on hold for a couple months and looking at these numbers it seems like it's probably justified like the mode it briefly touched the same level as wild when it first launched for like a couple of days and then it just dropped off and it ended up being just a really dedicated group that was still playing it there's still activity there unlike you know mercenary it is above mercenaries pvp thankfully like that is absolutely <laughs> they i think i think the the developer said there's like 15 to 20 hours a month of uh or maybe 15, 20 hours a day total of mercenaries PVP oh my across gosh. all of the all you know all games. So that's truly flatline. This is not quite flatline, but I, I think looking at this, it's probably clear that they decided to take a couple months off to retool twist and figure that out. It would be nice to get that communication as opposed to just the the decision that makes it seem like this was the plan all along. I'm starting the more I see stuff like this. I would be willing to bet that was not the plan to take two months off, but because engagement has been so low that they decided to, you know, to, instead of throwing more resources at it, try to figure out how to get it back to a good place. Yeah. I think they really are going to need to find a way of hooking people in and accessibly and yeah. I think the combination of, you know, they release this direct to wild expansion that a lot of wild players were like, this, this is a twist expansion. There's like, there's a few things here for us, but, but this is a twist expansion. And it, it just made it this kind of exclusive thing in a couple of ways because there were old cards that people didn't have and new cards that people didn't have and and then with with certain kind of power outliers that that left some bad feels and the variations just weren't that big i think the mode was sold on the twists being a little crazier honestly being more 
like anomalies, right? And I wonder if they might not have more success by, you know, one, doing, a, a, you know, closer to standard. I, there's, there's definitely a balance, right? Because the, the very first thing they did was like super accessible, but to the point that it was just not that different and had a lot of degenerate, it was like Stormwind meta, right? Um, and then this next one was very nostalgic for me, but inaccessible. And I kind of think maybe they should just try accessible but crazier, right? Like do yeah. standard but weird, weird rules, right? Like yeah. do do some kind of deck building restriction that's that's completely crazy. Like I, I don't know, almost tavern brawl esque, right? Like there are certain tavern brawls that uh although not not so much these days but like there have been ones where i've been like this is really cool deck building challenge like i don't know i would do a ladder of this right so uh I, yeah i i don't know i i hope that when it comes back they have sort of found that balance of like accessibility and difference i i know that like one of the goals was giving people more ways of using their cards for having like older cards but unfortunately it seems like that's a pretty niche number of us <laughs> well, they did because they didn't the problem is that they they did this in the wrong order right which is that or they did this like so long that that players have generally become accustomed to dusting all of their cards when they rotate because they got like if you don't play wild and wild is a very it appeals to a very particular type of player which is not you know not most players right most players are playing standard there hasn't been like a modern format a modern format from mt from magic the gathering right in hearthstone so like the the understanding has been you just go dust all your cards if you rotate if you're free to play or you're you know or you're just getting a standard bundle or whatever like that's how you get your dust to get you through the next standard year if that's where you're focusing and there hasn't been outside of duels hasn't really been any other use outside of wild which is its own thing to give those cards value so they're saying now well here's the way that we're going to give your cards value but all those cards are gone right and they people have dusted all those cards already, so they're kind of priced out of the format. Yeah, you have to buy stuff to to you know buy some of the cards to get it, or you could craft them. Whatever. That's something that most people who are still struggling to get a standard collection are not going to do. Uh, they're just not going like if you have a choice between I can spend some dust to play to play in this other format. Or I can wait and hold on to it and then have that for when Shadow Showdown in the Badlands comes out and be able to craft those cards to be able to play standard. That's what they're going to do. So you're appealing to people who, like like me and like you, Edel, who have those cards and have held on to them. But we are a vast minority because yeah. there hasn't been the message that your cards still have value. So people have just been dusting them. Despite me writing the, the guide every year of well, these are the cards you should dust. You know, like I know that my reach is still not that big, so it it is what it is, right? So I I think that's the problem with really with having it as the wonders format, right? Like if they'd gone to like New Age, but still with Caverns of Time, I don't know how well it would have worked, or like something else in these three months that wasn't just wonders. I think maybe it might have gone a little bit better. You know, it's something like the catch up packs, possibly even more generous if there's more sets that people are going to need to catch up on might be helpful. I also think like for me, a big problem was that the balance windows, you know, the fact that they had the format start and end with the month in September, but the balance windows were just like really, really bad for that in that month. So it just didn't, it couldn't get balanced for like a whole mm -hmm. month. And that, you know, it, even though I knew they had balanced it and that things were different in October, I just never quite got the excitement back to come back. And I think that some of the people for whom there was that dip where they did put in enough investment to play yeah. some, but then 
maybe didn't come back to it could have been. So I think that hopefully, you know, maybe I'm, I, I understand wanting to have the seasons be months because it's more memorable and easy to keep track of for players. But I think having it go with balance windows is also important, uh, which is something they're clearly thinking about. I think in part, you know, them launching the expansion early was partly BlizzCon and also partly, I think that the holiday balance windows will hopefully be better this year. So that might be something that they're considering for when it comes back. Cause I just think that that was unfortunate. It wasn't really, you know, the developer's fault or anything like that, that it happened, but it, I think it might've contributed some to the drop off. Yeah, absolutely. And and they're also, they are cannibalizing their own player base in a lot of different ways. Like it's, it's, good and cool that they're they're doing all these new things in in hearthstone and improving various modes but you know bg's i think it sets itself apart because it is a different game right like it is just completely different rules style players there are people who only play bg's and and don't interact with the rest of the client but when you consider people that are, are looking at the, the card game elements, right? Twist became my secondary mode. Some people, wild is their secondary mode. Some people, uh, uh, duels or arena or whatever, like they have been doing so much work to create all these additional modes and people only have so much time, right? And they've, with the ketchup packs, they're making standard more and more accessible, right? So they're doing all this stuff to to make the game so much better for so many people that the most expensive one is going to be what gets dropped off, right? That happened to mercenaries. It was time expensive as well as money expensive that now happened to Twist. And uh, Arena, like this thing showed, it hit this huge spike because... That's what happens when you when you put the new cards in there early. I tried it out. The new legendary rule change is super cool. Just starting with a legendary that you can try and build around potentially, like that, just makes arena way more appealing. And I'm sure for some people, they're like, "Oh, hey, this I actually love this now. Arena's you know fun again." And we we just only have so much to give to the game, <laughs> and so in in a way, by them making like all these things so cool and updated and 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 you know responsive to to player feedback just means like well something is going to be the least played and so yeah. that was mercenaries and 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 then was twist because... well, there's the least played and then there's just not played right and i think that there'd be okay if it right. was the least played if it was played at all but like when you're not able to get more play time than a literal dead mode then you know and i guess you know the xp change might affect that a little bit like I, it would be interesting to see what it would look like you know yeah after like what the, the mercenaries pb line's gonna look like probably but, like, a lot but but even so <laughs> right like a mode that people are really only into gold farm if nothing else i mean i'm sure some people are still playing the pve but like it not not a lot right but when you can't clear that line then you need to rethink it like that yeah is it going to be as as popular as wild probably not right but it should be at least like an active game mode with a community and if it's not there then it makes sense to just you know go back to the drawing board um speaking of the community and um you know player feedback there was a a very uh a very accurate methodical poll that was posted <laughs> today by the play hearthstone team um oh I, I i'm opening this up on the oh i thought i voted in this or oh no because i'm i'm here on the um hang on i have to switch to the to my account as opposed to the coin concede account in order to see this because you, uh i i, I with, we don't have any results official coin concede preferred mode of mode of play i i think I the don't... answer is i think we know the answer <laughs> I, I don't really want to start that battle in the middle of the podcast, so like let's not do that. Um, but 
yeah, let me let me just get this in here so that you can see it. But there was a very, uh, very uh, accurate and methodical poll posted by Play Hearthstone. What's your favorite way to play? Now, I will say we have not yet stopped the count. There's still 18 hours left. But with as of when we're recording this with 5,878 votes, um, aggro is at 16.6%. Combo is at 12.8%. Mid-range, which some people tell me isn't even a isn't even a type of deck, is 27.5%. And control is 43%. So clearly, all of you people who have been spamming the delete priest hashtag on Twitter over the years really need to go take a, a hard look in the mirror and, and <laughs> consider that you might just be part of the vocal minority and not and and respect the needs of the silent majority that that's all i'll say on that i, I will say there's a difference between <laughs> pr the way priest does control and the way other decks presently do control like <laughs> you know even removing snake from the equation right like Warlock with Sargeras or Warrior with Odin is is a little more focused on killing people rather than generating a bunch of value and stealing their opponent's good things. I don't know. I mean, I, I I'm just I'm just going by my head canon of control, which includes all of that. So you know, I'm <laughs> my, just my saying. Favorite... I'm just just saying that you all are you all are in the minority and you need to come over to my side of the fence that's all i'm saying well if we count the others together as i like to actually kill my opponent then that comes it is 57 percent, which it's is true. higher because that's how math works i mean my, my my actual of course i picked aggro for this on my own account although my my coin concede pick would be the chaos pick of mid-range because then everyone could get mad at us for what does mid-range even mean I, I'll tell you what mid-range means because I am, I am like the biggest mid-range supporter uh, and that is it's it's just everything between right like <laughs> mid-range is it is it, it's been called tempo it's been called like it's been called various nonsense things because it, it's just this amalgamation of like well we are not fast enough to be called aggro but we're proactive, but we have value cards and sometimes like really big stuff, right? So it's, <clears throat> I think it's like you've, you've got a bunch of like, you know, sixes and more, right? Like you, you've got that top end, but, uh, but you're still trying to be proactive and, and not focused on like just board clears and drawing cards, right? Like. Like in Rage Warrior, when it runs Grom and Ramornia and Olga all together. Yeah, I would consider in Rage Warrior to be a, a good example. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm just now realizing that I've had six months to use the word slempo. No, <laughs> I'm sorry if you're ears listeners, but no. <laughs> oh, I just clipped so hard. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I guess that means that we should probably talk about tournaments before we end up in a in in some sort of a of a fracas that tears the podcast apart. So it's let's let's do that. It's the grand tournament. So this is mostly a sort of announcement situation, but the Supergirl Gamer Pro Battlegrounds registration is coming up. You can uh, check that out over on their Twitter at SGGamerPro. Uh, it's uh, open qualifiers December 8th and 9th. The finals will be on the 10th. And the prize pool is $2,500. Uh, so, yeah, definitely go check out registration for that uh, over on, the, on their Twitter. We've got a link to the, uh, the tweet about it in our show notes just highly recommend participating in these uh, it's it's just a really nice environment for any women or non-binary players who either are new to tournaments or overwhelmed by playing in really big events i i've had nothing but good experiences 
and uh, everyone is is super nice. So, uh, yeah, it, it, great events. And then we also have coming up Battle of the Discords, uh, which Magesa has very kindly been spearheading for us. Uh, and that's going to be on December 2nd and 3rd. You will be competing individually, but choose to represent either Coin Concede, Vicious Syndicate, THL, or Tierras de Fuego. The format is standard, conquest, open decklist. There's going to be Swiss day one, and then top 16 single elimination day two. Uh, there are prizes of a pre-order or packs for the top four, uh, but mostly you are fighting to defend our honor. So... Uh, players yes. of all levels are encouraged to participate, and there's a server reward for the winning server also. I don't know what that server reward is, but that that would be exciting. Maybe a Nitro Boost, who knows? Uh, so, uh, yeah, go out there and represent Coin Concede. You can register up until December 2nd on Battlefy. So, uh, once again, you know, take a look at the link in the show notes if you would like to participate in uh, that tournament. But we uh, we've got some new decks to talk about we there's a lovely assemblage of all kinds of decks lots of exploration going on i mean six set meta is really at least early on before people you know kind of settle there's just so much to try out because there's so many cards so i think we can take it right over into explanations <laughs> All right, so we have a lot of decks to talk about, and because there's so much experimentation, it can be a little overwhelming to try to keep track of what's being tried, what you might want to play, what is performing well at the start, what is maybe tier fun, at least for now. Of course, we're going to have a change very shortly with the snake, and also things, you know, it's just been a couple days, so things take time to change and to get settled. So we're not necessarily going to be able to say like, what is the power level of this deck in an objective way <laughs> at this point, but we can say whether it seems to be performing well now and just wanted to give you a bit of an overview. Uh, a reminder, if you haven't seen, so uh, there is a spreadsheet over at Off Curve, which is Wicked's uh, site, uh, which we maintain along with World 8 from the Discord of decks that we've seen uh, all over the place, especially on, on Twitter. So you don't have to go on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, you can just go to this spreadsheet. Uh, there's a link in the show notes. Um, and you can also go to offcurve.com and you'll find it. Uh, new meta deck lists. And we'll be doing that for at least the first week uh, to yeah. be able to put in all kinds of decks. And that, so if we're talking about something, uh, it'll it's probably in that spreadsheet or if it's not I've tried to put in a link in the show notes if it's just like something that came out of the discord that uh, it's mostly like streamer decks and things like that that are in the spreadsheet yeah and we might go a little bit longer depending on what happens after the snake nerf if that opens up a new wave of experimentation or not generally we keep doing it until like people stop posting new and interesting stuff to to Twitter so, you know, as usually that peters out after about a week, but, you know, given we don't know how much is being held down by snakes. So I'm just envisioning a giant python now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's so that might go a little bit longer. But generally, I mean, you know, you can always go to like Beer Brick or, or Hearthstone top decks, which... You know, Megesa was featured on this week, by the way. You didn't even say that in your life and ladder that you're. Oh, I know. I, I feel got... like I made it. My Naga Freeze got featured on <laughs> top decks along with my. Oh, and there's there's also in there, by the way, there's Queen Ajara is in there and she's there for the weapon because let's 10 over the top damage in a deck that otherwise does not have over the top damage. It's quite easy if you have a wig which if she's active, it's because you have a wig, <laughs> then she's quite easy to activate and get those. Uh, so if you have never used that weapon or forgot what it does, it is a two mana weapon uh, with 
five durability and whenever you cast a spell it loses one of those and does two damage to the enemy hero and it is always the enemy hero not a random target so it's pretty reliably 10 damage So that that is my <laughs> the rest of my Naga Priest plug. The rest was up at the top. Uh, so I'm not necessarily saying this is the meta breaker, but it's been doing pretty well for me. Um, and we've been seeing a lot of things. I mean, so we already talked at length about Snake Warlock. Uh, <laughs> Snake Warlock, sorry. Uh, we talked some about Naga Demon Hunter. I had mentioned that... Uh, no Hands had a version that replaced uh, the Glaive Tar with Magnifying Glaive, especially because Glaive Tar with like Momentum doesn't work that well. Momentum, by the way, is an excellent card in that deck. Uh, I mean, basically the idea is you are drawing Sharpshooter, and then you play Sharpshooter, and you play a bunch of cheap Nagas and cheap spells. You know, for example, you have Greedy Partner to give you a coin that you can play. Uh, you have zero mana spells that demon hunter has uh, but the magnifying glaive was nice because it helps let you actually play cards in the early game while you're waiting for this to happen like you you should play cards also while you're waiting for this to happen because the sharpshooter will keep drawing you cards while she's going off so i think my mistake with this deck is that i like won't play anything until i'm ready to go off and that's then they have a huge board and so then all of your pings are just going into their huge board and that's not as effective if you're frustrated pacing this deck, by the way, if you can, if you're the right type of deck for this, try to keep a big board <laughs> because that really does make it harder for them to get their pings where they want them to. Uh, and don't leave it up, if at all possible. <laughs> I think that one's fairly obvious, but... <laughs> uh, I've also There were some people in the Discord talking about doing like an outcast hybrid somehow with the Naga Demon Hunter. There's also been like a big Demon Hunter Naga hybrid... Uh, I don't know that there's any sort of refined versions of those yet, but I put some possible lists. The outcast would be that you have Halveria as like an alternative way to do damage so that you're not completely hamstrung if you don't get the sharpshooter or like so completely dependent on that. It does mean that your ceiling for the sharpshooter is lower, but the hope is that you don't need it to be as high. I haven't actually played that myself yet. Um, but Outcast yeah. is a fun deck, so. It, and I'm looking at Nohan's list, and it looks like he's running Frequency Oscillator with the only mech in the deck being Bartendo Bot, which is the and two mistake. mana. And yeah. Mistake. It's for oh, Mistake. Oh, there mis there's Mistake also. Okay. Because, like, so Bartendo Bot is... So you get a zero mana a, Naga. You get a zero mana Naga, because I was looking at Bartendo Bot, which is battle two mana, three, one, battle cry, draw an outcast card, and slide to the left side of your hand, and I think... The only outcast card that's run in the deck is Wayward Sage, which is a Naga. If I'm if I'm reading this, it correctly. is a Naga, yeah. Yeah, well, I know it's a Naga. I think that's the only outcast card that's in the deck, though. So it's guaranteed drawing drawing Wayward Sage, which um, which slides it to the left, which means it's always an outcast position, which means that it always discounts your other what is discounts what does it discount. It's not Both your the left and right card. most. Cards left, right, in your left hand. and right most. Yeah, so you're just trying to get like, you're you're doing everything you can to get discounts and get things for free, and then just draw as many cards as you can so you can momentum and hit them in the face for a million, and it it works pretty well when you can do it. But it is a little bit, it's a little bit difficult to play just because it's one of those decks like Naga Mage where you're making a lot of split second decisions as you're drawing and constantly having to react to new information coming in, which is those, those APM turns can be very intense and they can be hard to navigate until you get some reps under you and you know what you should be doing to kind of reduce the decision space. Because like when you're drawing a card and then reading it, it's, it doesn't really, <laughs> it's not as conducive to being able to do a lot of things at a turn. So because it doesn't have the discovers, I did find it easier than I found Naga Mage, although people click with different decks. It definitely helps to get some just like feel for what's going to cost less. So I would be, I, I wasn't, and I'm not saying I'm an expert with this deck, but I had pretty good success with it. I wasn't necessarily doing the math on exactly how much I'm going to do because 
despite teaching math, I'm not that quick on my mental math. So I'm just and counting's for nerds just... anyway. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> counting's for for blockers, right? I am definitely not the blocker in this situation. So I was just uh, having a sense of like what's going to maximize my mana the most, uh, and just play it that way. You know, play the cheapest thing. Um, play a coin if you have it obviously you know even if you're just going by those rules of thumb that's helpful and yeah so taking a second if you do pick it up to kind of read through the list and familiarize yourself with the cards if you haven't played with them is definitely worth it before you jump into a game because uh, it's the kind of thing where you don't want to be figuring out how this pop-off turn works during the pop-off turn ideally <laughs> And you don't necessarily need to kill them with the first pop-off turn, by the way. You do have two sharpshooters, and they are sticky. So do keep that in mind. Yeah. There were multiple times facing this deck as blood where I was just like, I must be dead here. I There's there's no way I'm not dead. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, they just don't have sharpshooter. Uh, but uh, there were other times where I was sitting there like... If they play sharpshooter, I can't kill it. <laughs> like <laughs> I am so scared. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think the the deck definitely has some some high highs and and low lows. And uh, it's just kinda... yeah, if you don't draw it, you are sad. I think Leptin in the Discord posted a list that had like Finley and the graveyard new card that shuffles your hand. Like, and possibly something else is just like, we must draw a sharpshooter. That is how this deck works. <laughs> I I forgot. I, I had an, it's, it's probably bad, but I had been messing around with an idea of like, you just run Scythe anyways, because it turns some of your minions into spells. And if it hits the sharpshooter, then you have that many more chances to uh, to pull it, right? Because any of the three souls you can turn into the sharpshooter. That's so, uh, then aren't you like not drawing Naga? You, wicked. I'm saying you run more than three minions. But does that? It works. Doesn't it not? It. It 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 it, it actually just picks oh, it three. Oh. Works. It just picks oh, okay. three randomly. It just right? picks, it picks three. three different it doesn't ones care randomly. that there's only three. Okay. Yeah. We've just it, only no been one running has ever... three to maximize it. Yeah, yeah, nobody tried it. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> no one's ever done that before. <laughs> but it is possible. I, I'm sorry. I'm just having my own personal, you could do that moment in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, probably bad, but it was something that I, I thought of and then never actually uh, took a crack yeah. at because I got distracted by, by other shiny things. But... Such as potentially, well, I don't know if you've been playing it. I played some uh, Dragon Druid. I at first I saw the um, sort of buff dragon list that really just runs. I mean, from McBanterface. I mean, we're hard running uh, the Sunken City card, mm -hmm. Azharan Gardens, that gives yep. plus one plus one, uh, and then two cards in your hand and then it it puts one on the bottom that gives plus one to plus one to like all your minions everywhere and you dredge that up and it has just every possible way to buff things and then you play really big dragon golems and really big other dragons and then you win <laughs> i i first saw that deck i almost didn't play it on stream i was looking at it i was like i don't understand this deck and then someone in chat explained it to me and uh, it turns out it's pretty good so <laughs> Yeah. I, I think there's been some refinements to the deck. There's also been like a drum version that HS Replay had separated out. They're definitely still working out their um, yeah. deck buckets, <laughs> how they categorize things. So keep that in mind if you're looking at their stats. But As someone who has done that in the past, it takes a bit <laughs> to get right. And even after that, even once you get it, you have to refine it a lot because people do weird things and end up taking peanut butter and chocolate and mashing them together and making you have to come up with a new archetype. So, yeah. That's just a great combination. I, I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about. <laughs> yeah, I am I am a peanut butter chocolate person. I mean, uh, so am I, but, it, but you know, when I have to then, you know, add in a classification in my code for a Reese's peanut butter cup, 
then I get a little annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, computers are not good at fuzzy logic and fuzzy categories. It's true. Yeah, they're also not good when you give them peanut butter and chocolate. But, you know, that's, that's <laughs> <in> there. <laughs> peanut butter frosting is the stickiest stuff. I would try to work with it. And it's just like, I, I have bad spreading skills anyway. But uh, how are your spreading yeah, flakes but... <laughs> skills, though? <laughs> better than my peanut butter frosting spreading skills yeah although i kept like thinking that it would just summon a, I, I kept forgetting that it only summons a lot of things if you have dragons in your hand oh yeah very very important clause. that's important yeah yeah <laughs> yep. that's very important yeah it's cool how like that and azurite chain gang just formed n new archetypes right like yeah. uh the azurite chain gang is in a uh, hunter list that uh, we'll get to later, but uh, uh, just really great card for anything that's able to to buff stuff in deck, which is, is apparently a hunter's thing right now. And yeah, this this druid like anytime you see summon copy of this, right, is just ripe for uh, these kinds of things. One that I also have on my list, taking advantage of copy stuff, is I want to do an elemental mage and there it's not stats you're copying it is aguin death rattle that you're copying so oh if you, that's disgusting right so you can run azurite <laughs> chain gang and there's oh, an elemental wow. that says for each turn that you've played an elemental before this summon a copy of of this minion so if oh you've God, kept an gross. elemental chain going and it gets the Aegwyn buff, then you can get a lot of plus two spell damage. And your only spell is Frozen Touch anyway. So I, <laughs> like that's, that's the way that, I mean, maybe not the only one, right? You've got power, uh, you, not power, uh, Synchronize, right? The Oh, get the, three, the get three one, uh, one, two, three elemental, yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, that's something that just have had in my uh in, in my back pocket to to work on it, you know in a in a post snake world we'll we'll see <laughs> but uh well, yeah lots lots of fun stuff to do with with minions that say summon a copy of this that is also one of the most you decks that I <laughs> think of <laughs> but I am definitely much much more so than Reno that. Blood DK for God's sake <laughs> <laughs> at least it's 30 card yeah. Hey, I will have you know that deck is very fun. Reno is is a very fun card to play, and uh, I love I love this heel turn for you. It's great. It's fantastic. I it's not a heel turn. I've loved blood since the moment we got vampiric blood. Yeah. I just like going over the max health. Uh... Well, we had mentioned the hunter, and there's definitely, especially today, a big. Uh, bump in the amount of um, hunters that I've been seeing. So had um, I, I had been playing on my stream a list from CDC, as CDC knows what's up with Hunter, and uh, done really well with it. Where let me get it up here. Is that the Agro Zoo list? The Agro Zoo list, yeah. Uh, Is there any other kind? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's the one that's called Agro Zoo. He call, I'm, I'm just, listen, you take that up with, with Sid because Sid called it aggro zoo. And I, I mean, I, you know, if you're going to not let me say Slempo on the podcast, I mean, call, you can take that up with him that he's calling it <laughs> aggro zoo. And, I, and he's taking that in. straight to his ATM machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the the list that i had started with has i mean basically just everything to buff things so it has um observer of miss and eggs and messenger buzzard which is the new one draw beast give minions in your hand plus one plus one as a death rattle uh bovine skeleton which is the one that as long as you can buff it at least one attack it just never goes away it just resummons itself when it dies and then as long as you buff that one like it'll just never go away uh, Hawk's Rider Rancher, uh, Hope of Quelthalos, Bunny Stomper, which this list doesn't have Hy Hydrolodon, but of course, if you're playing a slightly slower list, Bunny Stomper plus Hydrolodon is just full 
clear forever. Uh, I sure Saddle he has up other is actually that fun with Bunny Stomper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure that he does. Uh, the saddle up works pretty well with Stomper because let's uh, give your minions death rattle, summon a random beast that costs three or less, and then they all have rush. So if you have a board to clear, that can be helpful. And uh, it plays, you know, Thorn Mantle Musician. And so, uh, and Bananas, obviously. Tremors, because those are even better when they're bigger. They're good anyway. So some other versions I've been seeing have like the um, monkeys that have taunt. I don't know why. Barrel, barrel, monkeys. barrel monkeys, yeah. Because those protect your tremors. And are also pretty good when you buff them. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in even Bestial Madness, which was a card that I kind of expected to see play and never saw play, that is uh, the Shadow spell give plus one attack to all minions in your hand deck and battlefield. So, we're we're just we're playing all the buffs, and then going face with them and really being sad if there's a shard of the Naru. Yeah, uh, we <laughs> M- M- Maureen and I played this on her account on day one because the, it's actually a pretty cheap list to build the only legendary in it is hope of call so you can you can build this pretty cheaply and and one of the things that we did accidentally is so we played a bovine uh bovine skeleton right off the bat that we, and we buffed it with a with a banana in order to get the finale on thor mantle musician and then they killed the bovine skeleton the thor it which summoned a bovine skeleton which got the which got the thor mantle musician buff so now it was Amazing. a four four so you know there's some pretty cool things that you could do with that and uh it's a pretty clever deck and it, it gets there it gets there pretty quickly i mean observer of myths is still a good card you get to play sneaky snakes sneaky snacks excuse me just which i i don't know <laughs> if it's any good but it's fun to say and i mean you know, when you have Hawkstrider Rancher, then they all get those buffs. So that makes it easier to get your Bovine Skeletons buffed. Uh, you know, you have, a, a me, you know, Messenger Buzzer draws a minion out of your deck and buffs it. So there's a, you just kind of get there pretty quickly. Uh, you, you just get a board that's just kind of scary. And then it's really hard to remove uh, when, if your opponent's just like trying to take them off one or two at a time, which early in the game, you kind of have to. So you just snowball early and then just kind of get there. I am kind of offended by the three one ofs. <laughs> it was a day was one a day deck. One he deck. was still figuring it out. What do you, you want? <laughs> I, like there is an arms dealer, a bunny stomper, a ten gallon hat. Like I, I, I get that if you have one ten gallon hat, you you don't need the second one. But I don't know. I'd probably just go two bunnies. Like I mean. The second 10-gallon hat would just be ridiculous, right? Totally. It looks like I'm looking, he had a second version that he posted that has, that cut the arms dealer, cut the hat. It has a miracle salesman, foul eggs. Uh, mm-hmm. It has Magatha. It has sure. an instrument yeah. tech for the Hope of Quelthalas. The Victorious Vrykul, which is the one that like gives you another 2-3 in your hand. Uh, mm-hmm. two stompers so it looks like it's been it's being iterated upon uh as well as of course the dc has reno hunters of course as one does <laughs> of course and i i saw a fantastic stream last night of uh smarms being instructed on the ways of highlander hunter by Linny. it was delightful just excellent content and i kind of think Sometimes I swear Smarms is just Domino from from X Men, who, who like her superpower is lucky, because <laughs> <laughs> they had a game that she won, where I think like twice Prison of Yogsaron discarded their hand. <laughs> I mean, I guess, so like that part's not lucky, but it's lucky to to like then win from there, like. Or maybe they were, the deck is just so good that they didn't need cards to win. I yeah, <laughs> I I don't know. It was the, the opponent was watching the content and just like this is such good content. <laughs> but yeah, Reno Hunter seems cool, but it also feels like something that's just gonna 
be around and I'll get to eventually. Whereas like the cleave hunter that, that I mentioned yes. earlier just seems so cool. And I completely forgot that there's a magnetized card in there and magnetized kind of means charge. So I, I, I missed a, a potential lethal that I just sort of forgot. Oh yeah, I have these two magnetized minions that I've been buffing this whole game that I could have just attached to a minion that could hit face. It's uh, it, it's it's pretty bonkers. The, the, basically, you, I think, try and play as many of the buzzards as possible early game because they will then draw your other beasts, right? So you keep the uh, breeder, right, and pick buzzard. And you, you keep awakening tremors because you want to play that and then get those buffed up. So you just have these cheap one drops that have that have been getting buffed, and it it's got barrel of monkeys to sort of stem the the tide from you know early game to sort of the mid game, and eventually you just you know play a buffed Serenai chain gang or you've got both stonebound gargan and hollow hound. So if your opponent is playing multiple minions uh <laughs> you do the cleave always a bigger jormungar thing which i'm so glad to finally have a deck to play that card i've, I've been wanting to play it for so long and it just like was briefly experimented with but then didn't have a place but uh, yeah i'm very excited to to play a bunch of this deck because it it just it does the thing it does the cleave abj thing and you can that magnetic card I was talking about, the absorbent parasite, magnetizes two beasts as well as mechs. And obviously you've got all kinds of beasts. So you just you build up a bunch of cards in hand, buff them with buzzard, with bestial madness, and then magnetize onto a cleave and play always bigger Jormagar and just obliterate them. It is I mean, delightful. And the best the part is that your opponent that Don was posting. Oh, yeah. sorry. The, the, the best part is that your opponent doesn't actually realize that they're dead until they're done reading Stonebound Gar Gargan because they've probably never seen that card before. So by the time they finish reading what the card does, they look down and they're dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely excited to try this deck and just the screenshots that I've been seeing um, from like Dawn, for example, in the, in the Discord were just... Uh, insane i mean really quick really huge minions uh and definitely seems to be taking twitter by storm as well <laughs> uh with people excited about it so that is one to check out that's on the spreadsheet and it's linked in the in the show notes um we have uh reno paladin has actually been getting a lot of hype uh Zacho from Vicious Syndicate is very excited about it. We also have a somewhat different version from uh, Lulu in our Discord, which is more of like a big Highlander Paladin type of situation. So a somewhat different list. But overall, Reno Paladin seems like it's it's doing pretty well. Um, uh, I'll definitely you can find you can find these things either in the spreadsheet or in the in the show notes. Um, but uh, Lulu has just been posting screenshots <laughs> continuously of uh, insane boards are just like, oh, you made an insane board? Well, equality consecrate. Now you don't have that anymore. <laughs> or Horn of the Windlord. Uh, too bad. <laughs> uh, Amethyst Peacekeeper continues to be a very good card. Uh, the, uh, you know, Reno itself, obviously a very good card. Prismatic Beam and Showdown working pretty well. So there's a lot of stuff doing work here. The Flight of the Bronze, actually, if you get that with the, um, if you discover, so that's the one that does discover a dragon, mana thirst seven, summon a five, five dragon with taunt. If you get the new quick draw dragon that does six lifesteal damage, plus is a six, six, plus you get a five, five with taunt for seven mana. That's like, not, not a bad turn seven. Yeah. <laughs> so uh there's that's one that i haven't tried myself yet but um and i've been seeing other people trying reno paladins um vino was tweeting about it vino's been tweeting 
many Reno lists all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've been seeing I've been seeing a lot of Secret Mage in my opponents, even hmm. though the Reliquy card is bugged. So Reliquy uh, casts a couple of secrets. And right now, it will sometimes, if you already have a secret, recast the secret that you have up. And so therefore, you you don't get a second one. So you just lose out on a secret. That'll be fixed soon. Uh, it is, I mean, I'm just like, oh my gosh, why am I facing a secret mage? I mean, it's running like all the secret cards, right? Even like, you know, the 6-6 the six, six that gets discounted and mm-hmm. um, that that whole package and uh, people seem to be having some success with it. Uh, so if you enjoy making your opponent say, oh my God, why am I facing a secret mage? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just, you know, there've been pretty good cards for a secret mage around that just like hasn't manifested. And now because excavate cards are pretty fun, people are like, well, the excavate twice thing for mage says secrets on it so let's just throw it all together and then to top that off with you know objection and explosive runes are pretty nice into snakes i think yep. people were going towards it as a sort of like let's make this more complicated for the warlocks so yeah uh, I'm surprised we haven't seen more Secret Rogue. Not that I am trying to speak that into existence, because I assure you I'm not. But <laughs> <laughs> Secret Rogue with kidnap so that you give your warlock opponent an extra snake. They get even more snakes. <laughs> and they can use they can use their smokestack finally to kill the to kill the bag that's holding the snake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the smokestack is so hard to get off. Uh, so um I've been seeing reports of plague excavate. Death Knight, which was something that we had talked a little bit about from theory crafting, uh, that so if you're interested in finally getting to play some plagues, the excavate gives you more to do rather than just relying on your plagues. Uh, and uh, pure buff Paladin is very strong right now. I mean, Paladin does tend to be one of those decks that, like in the early days of an expansion, it just really punishes all the jank that people are playing. Mm-hmm. and shows up really strong uh, but basically um we've taken let me get the most recent lists here well i don't know if this is the most recent but i have world eights list up on the uh up on the stream so yeah, yeah I mean... and there's there's a few ways that you can go with it but in general like deputization aura is the new aura that gives the leftmost minion plus three attack and lifesteal uh for three turns and a fun fact about that, apparently that used to say taunt instead of lifesteal. And then huh. after they did a internal <laughs> playtest of it, several people were like, no. <laughs> because uh, it had to clear the yeah. entire conga line every time. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh, amazing. And it's still good. Uh, so you have that, you have your normal like boogie down, you have high host silver wing, which draws you things. The uh, one that discounts your next holy spell by two, the the cowboy, has been falling out of some lists. Yeah. Um, but the silver wing is very good. You're running all your one drops. You're running boogie down. Um, you can do the like dude uh, way with maybe a, I, there's a list here like the the um, that you can go full dude, or you can go more like garden's grace, um, which is more similar to that previous list. That's what I've been playing. So what I've been seeing has been the Garden's Grace versions, and they are yeah. terrifying. I It hasn't mattered because I've been playing Blood Decay, but uh, it, it is spooky what they can do post um, Order in the Court, because Order in the Court just finds both uh, Garden's Graces, and they're, they're generally free by that point, and being able to go like Garden's Grace, Garden's Grace, and the Keeper's aura to just like clear the way of any yeah. taunts yes. is is yeah. pretty huge. And I could see how, particularly against uh, what Warlock is doing in terms of removal tools, if they're having to desperately clear all your 
early stuff with their defiles and smokestacks, etc., and aren't able to, you know, hit a, a certain amount of swinging things back in their favor, being able to then as the paladin come around and say, hey, I am just going to go ahead and Katori Light Blade and have this 1-1 one, one and just, like, play a couple Garden's Graces, and now you've got these two, like, massive Divine Shield minions. Like, even if they have a reverb, Divine Shield protects to some extent from that. So, uh, yeah, it it's pretty spooky, the amount of stats that, that this deck can can pull out of thin air. Yeah, yeah if, and if you like the previous all that, version then, of this. Yeah. If they, if they get through all that, then you have the counters, counters to back that up, right? So it's like, right now, okay, well, now you've dealt with the first the first stage of the final boss. Now here's the second <laughs> stage. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, World 8, of course, has even been running Spotlight, um, which is an, it, you know, is an option that you can do because there's a lot of things like give Divine Shield, and mm -hmm. it just gives even more stats. That's not necessarily a core inclusion, but... Uh, that is something that I'm seeing here. And then even in the non-dude list, sometimes you're seeing Buffet Biggin just because it's a lot of stats. And then especially if you're also running Spotlight, it's more Divine Shields for the Spotlight, uh, which is the tradable card that uh, turn converts a Divine Shield into a 5-5. Five five. So, yeah, and it's a, it's a solid deck, and I think we'll remain so. It probably will dip a little bit once the rest of the field gets a little more refined, because that's what tends to happen, but I think it's likely to remain a very solid deck. Um, so that's another, like that, and like Enrage Warrior, which is basically the same Enrage Warrior. You can just go back and listen to our Enrage Warrior episode. <laughs> I didn't. Just I didn't expect that was going to be evergreen, but here we are. So, <laughs> it ain't broke. Now, those are some of the things up on top. Uh, yeah, Paladin and Rage Warrior. Those are actually ahead of Snake Warlock and Dragon Druid, currently on HSR for Diamond Three Legend Showdown in the Badlands. Uh, <laughs> for what it is worth. So, um, I put. I put Reno Mage up here, but I feel like maybe it's more goes under under hipster decks here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I've I, I haven't seen, a, I haven't seen a single Reno Mage, so <laughs> well, we'll, I don't... we'll we'll move that yeah. under under hipster decks, which we'll we'll go through a little faster. Some of our I have a bunch of uh, decks listed as uh, tier fun and or hipster hipster. I, as like... in, I don't know that this is tier fun or not. <laughs> I feel like the only reason to go Reno Mage is because mage has so many like good and cool cards right now <laughs> that you're just like yeah sure we'll just do one of each of them and uh yeah we get to play rumath and uh mm -hmm. and, and reno and and yeah it's great yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> we get to whatever. play all the cards we wanted to play yeah and, i mean rumath gets you a free titan if you've excavated enough so you know Sure. Yeah. Well, and with all the discover spell things, right? Like infinitize the max too. Yeah. You can discover the freezer thing and excavate, right? So. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the world is your oyster, you know. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. And well, then... on on these decks here, we don't necessarily, you know, I, if there's ones that stand out to you, talk about. Uh, most of the ones that really stand out to me, we've already mentioned because i made sure to get them in de in uh, life on ladder uh some of the decks that are looking not so great on hsr right now although again early meta low refinement uh snake's about to be nerfed buck you know the algorithmic recognition is is new uh but some of the things that are looking less less good are like sludge warlock taunt warrior frost death knight uh, Reno Priest was down there, although it did beat me because if you just get really lucky and draw your release first, and <laughs> built your deck to get really lucky and draw your release first, I guess. Like I was like, aren't you running other minions? No, you're just counting on getting your release first. It happened twice in a row. My God. And then the servers went down, uh, just in like the Bay Area where <laughs> I am. <laughs> and uh, 
uh, one of the people in the Discord who had been spectating me was like, oh, it's, it was all of the control priests. It's just the server gave up. Too many control priests. I'm not going to let you find another one. Uh, Rainbow DK doesn't look great in the stats, although I, 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 I hope it's just not refined yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I, I'll work on it eventually, but it, it, it's one like triple rune payoff in CNE, just kind of doesn't compare to the multiple triple rune payoffs that that the other uh the other ways of playing dk have and i think they they finally have a breakthrough with excavates and plagues being able to be fused together into one deck that there's like enough reason there and, and enough tools available for for that combination um Hand buff is still a little too fair. That's the the blood blood unholy combination. So I, I think you know people have said like, well, this would be just making a different kind of triple rune card, and that was the problem in the first place. But I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind them making triple rune cards in the sense of like stuff that is powerful reason to play these other combinations, right? Uh, and just the one of climactic necrotic explosion is and it's legendary yeah right so you can only run the one of it it is not it's not the same as you know blood getting vampiric blood and soul stealer and mograine right or uh, i mean really just grave strength for triple unholy right like that's <laughs> <laughs> it's all you need yeah and you have two uh, of them and, and marigar <laughs> marigar as well that's like, true. Marigard's, yeah, Marigard's very good. <laughs> Marigard, Marigard's good when you don't get your Grave Strengths, you know. But. Right, so. Marigard's the kind of card where you say, you're facing it and you go, I only lose to Marigard, and then they have it on eight. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. That's just how, that's Every just time. science. <laughs> so I, I kind of, yeah, hope we get, if, uh, if it still doesn't pan out, I hope yeah. we get another, like, straight up rainbow card that is is powerful enough yeah. And, yeah and i mean like there's a lot of stuff you can try like i know dawn in the discord has been really big on nature shaman which has gotten mm -hmm. a lot gotten a boost from like the the greedy partners to get coins to be able to fit yeah. more in in a turn so you don't have to run jazz base you have the cactus construct i forget i don't even remember what the card does but i know it's a big deal I'm, I'm looking it up now i can't I, like i uh, i have like a mental block on that card that i can just never remember <laughs> like what that, that card does cutter, battle cactus cry draw cutter, a spell yeah. if you cast it this turn gain plus one plus two and taunt it's a right. two mana two two murloc so it gives you some early game protection while also drawing you a spell so uh dry scale deputy is the one that the next right. time you draw yes, a spell get a too. copy of it yeah and uh, i don't even think you care about the text on the, the second sentence of Cactus Cutter's Battle Cry all that much, right? You just care about the fact no. that it says draw a spell. That right? it says draw a spell. Tor yeah. Tour Guide gives you two bodies for your Bioluminescence for one mana. <laughs> yep. Miracle Salesman gives you a free extra spell where, you know, unlike Arcane Hunter, your spell damage works for anything. So uh, you can yeah. throw that base too. And it gives you a little, you know, it's also a one mana minion for your uh pop off turn or just to have something in the early game so uh yeah this is definitely linked in the notes. i have to say i think the like coolest and like well thought out cards that they added to this expansion in in like a, an under sold way i think are miracle salesman and uh was it tram conductor right the two one drops so one mana two two for miracle salesman death rattle will get a, a tradable snake oil and like it's just good right like for an aggro deck that's just it's a one mana two two with an upside like <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. worst case scenario you are running out of stuff to do later on and you trade that away to look for something better right maybe it shows up again 
and and you have to trade it away again. But like it's it's kind of gives you a a, a draw card, and then the uh, tram conductor giving you the the sludge. That's just like this extra little removal spell, right? For a uh, one mana two one. Both like great aggressively statted minions that can go into aggro and then have these cool other uses, right? Like Tram Conductor in Sif Mage being a fell spell, basically, that you can just include in the deck. Mm. And then for both Nature Shaman and Sif Mage, the the Snake Oils being able to give you, you know, zero mana stuff for your, your big spell damage turn. I just I think the the versatility of those you know, kind of uh, unsuspecting minions is just really, really cool and well thought out. Yeah. And just clever. And uh, even just the the flavor of it is clever. So I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, they're the both art. great flavor wise as well. Well, I don't know how Only great it was is flavor wise, but you know. <laughs> Yes, Truly. I am a one-trick pony who's completely... I, You know, it's probably not a Naga specifically for Naga Demon Hunter. Like, <laughs> they probably were like, you know how we do a slight nerf to Naga Demon Hunter beforehand is we just make this a snake and not a Naga. Because <laughs> the, the other one, the Snake Oil Seller that gives the opponent the two Snake Oils in their deck, that one is a Naga. So... I wouldn't be surprised if Miracle Salesman didn't start out life as a Naga, but I have, I, this is pure speculation. I have no knowledge. So, uh, yeah, I haven't seen a lot of uh, rogue. So there was a lot of rogue decks in three crafting and like a lot of rogue decks on day one. And then they've just kind of disappeared a little bit. Yeah. Um, I played some of Gallon's well deck. It was, it was fine. It won me some games. Um, I had to clear a quest. I didn't lose too much MMR clearing said quest. So, and you know, sometimes you have a big pop up tor- turn, and or sometimes you just do concoction things, and it's you know, it's just or sometimes you bounce your Drilly the Kid repeatedly, and then play the Azerite Scorpion a whole bunch, <laughs> right? Like it's got a whole bunch of different ways that you can win because like you you can just like keep shadow stepping your like if you shadow step the Drilly the Kid, right? That's five excavates right there up to if like you you play it on the turn that you draw it you shadow step mm-hmm. it you play it again and then it dies that's just five out of eight excavates so you know and i did open a signature drilly the kid so i felt like i needed to get at least a little bit of use oh, out of it, so. we swapped once again I know. signatures right i got pip the potent you got drilly I didn't get the pip. kid I, yeah i, I would have liked I, pip i didn't get pip i yeah well likewise pip was the drilly, only one i got didn't get drilly uh <laughs> Yeah, I am confounded by Rogue's tier four excavate thing because, like, all Rogue has so many ways of adding cards to its hand right now that, like, you just can't do all of them at once, right? Like, <laughs> you're adding coins to your hand, you're adding concoctions to your hand, which then draw you cards. And, like, every time I've seen someone go really hard on excavates, they're just like, I can't, when am I ever going to play this reward? Because I just don't have hand space to get the spells yeah. off of it, so I, I feel like you would almost have to do a a dedicated excavate deck that is like built to empty its hand to make space for the big play eight free spells and hope they get you their turn. Like it, it, it just. I, mean, I don't clearly actually... you just need to generate a tone tampering, <laughs> right? Like that's just the answer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but it's it's just kind of funny, and and to the point that like my uh, miracle rogue deck, I just I ran the coin stuff, and not wishing well, and the only excavate is really the kid because he's that good by himself, right? If you can get the first three stages and that's it, fabulous. Like you don't you don't need the reward, and uh having a lot of coin generators is really powerful with the location and with Draka. So um, maybe maybe I'm being petulant and I, I should include Wishing Well also just so like you always have a payoff for the coins. But uh, yeah, it 
I'm surprised we have not seen more development on Miracle Rogue, and I do wonder if there will be a return to form later on in the yeah. post Snake world. Yeah, I think uh, the other thing is that like Black Rock Drilling Shovel is like actually the worst excavate, worse than Smokestack. It's just <laughs> wait, so wait, bad. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me it's worse than three mana ex execute excavate? <laughs> I at least that kills something sometimes. Like this is just like it's a it's a worse version of your hero power that it's like basically three mana deal one damage excavate. Because you're you're paying one mana for the weapon and then two mana for the hero power, and maybe you swing with it once before you do that. Right? Like it's it's actually I mean, I guess it's better than smokestack because it can it can go face and it doesn't need to kill something, but like it's so bad. It's so awkward. When you top deck that, it feels terrible. Like, oh, great. Like, especially when you've already excavated, like, five, six times. Like, I mean, you do need to get to eight, but it's also like, oh, my God. Like, I, I have to play this, and it just feels awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I Yeah, I, I don't know. I think they had to do something like that to some extent because Rogue has Shadow Steps, so they could not give it a battle cry in class besides. Oh like, yeah. Besides oh, Drilly, I'm glad it right? sucks. Dr yeah. Drilly is already <laughs> insane with Shadow Step, and you can Shadow Step the the Cobalt Miner, right? So I, I think it, it's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. again, I don't think you even really want to excavate more than the first three. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just noticing that someone had put all right, that uh, this was from yesterday, but I, I, I missed it. Uh, Donkey had a mech rogue with the coins and wishing well, because you do have copper tail snoop. It's true. Oh, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's probably the thinking. Uh, so, you know, Mech, Mech Rogue is a, Mech Rogue's a good deck. <laughs> so what I like better is, uh, taking the, the Mech Rogue that I think maybe it was Glory, I, but I forget it's been a while, ha had played where you've got the, uh, four mana, four, four death rattle card, the Scourge, wait, Scourge Illusionist, Scourge, yeah. Yeah, Scourge Illusionist, yeah. yeah. That pulls, a you know, four, four copy of uh, a death rattle from your deck you still have mothership and you just run drilly like that's it just add drilly it's a death rattle so sometimes you'll get a, a free drilly the kid uh, for for two excavates great like the excavate cards are, are just solid that yeah. i think getting the possibility mm -hmm. of like pulling drilly getting extra drillies off that is 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 worth it and good enough value that uh and, and it's a mech right so you're you're not really sacrificing anything that is definitely yeah that is definitely clever and i i think that this this list from donkey is somewhat similar of like instead of the scourge instead of the scourge it, it scourge illusionist we give ourselves some extra late game with the well <laughs> um uh, they're actually running triple sevens I guess because that deck wow. has just completely run out of cards. Oh god! Holy smokes! So triple sevens, if you already forgot, <laughs> like I did and just looked up, is the seven mana card, deal seven damage to a minion, draw seven cards. I, that's then. So no gear shift anymore. Then no gear shift. No. Yeah. yeah. The the gold Ooh. animation on triple sevens is very good, by the way. Just because I think I got one or Maureen did, and that that gold animation is excellent. But yeah, it's. I mean that's. That's basically Myra's unstable element at that point. Like, uh huh. It's... <laughs> well, well. So, I think we've covered pretty much all the bases. There's lots of experimentation going on. Keep your eyes on Ahiran Twitter or your favorite, you know, posters of, of fun lists. I'll be taking a look at, at or the spreadsheet decks and yeah, or the spreadsheet. It's going to be updated constantly. The Discord as well, where people are going to be posting their uh, experiments. I, uh, if you want my blood list, I, I posted on Twitter after I hit Legend. I was like, okay, I need to actually hit Legend so like people believe me that that 
that this can can do the thing but since i didn't have stats to back it up but uh yeah it's it's a great time for, for deck building in in these six set metas and we're gonna get even more cards when we get the mini set in a few months so uh, we'll see what things are like in a, a post snake meta but we have many folks we'd like to thank. Check out our thanks section on the website at coinconceded.com, where you can also find our contact info, our show notes, and our Patreon information. You can monetarily support our show at patreon.com slash coinconceded. Join us every week live by following us on Twitch at twitch.coinconceded.com. Join our community chats in our Discord at discord.coinconceded.com. And write into our email at coinconceded at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at coinconceded, as well as like, share, and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash coinconceded. If you'd like to see this way, head on over to our shop at shop.coinconceded.com. Big thanks to our producers, Number Theory, Crash, Beef Squatch, David P, Walu, Jeremy T, Battle Caps, Grumpy Monk, The Burger Cub, Kirk Regan, Forgiven One, Enraged Chicken, Grizzly Bear, and The Grand Arcanum. And quick note, there will be no podcasts next week. Happy American Thanksgiving if you celebrate. Uh, it's just going to be easier logistically. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think between just various of us trying to come up with ways of recording at our relatives' houses and also, you know, the, the baby element for me right now, it just uh, seemed like the time to actually take a week off. So we will join you in around the time I expect they'll be, be thinking about balance changes and uh, we'll, we'll get to talk about those next time because... That's when they would want to get them in before worlds. So, but uh, yeah, coin concedes. Wicked. Uh, well, I'm going to coin concede to everyone who donated to the fundraiser that I was doing for Boston Children's Hospital. We ended up raising a little over $500, which is not as much as we raised last year, but also I was not sick with COVID for like two weeks last year during the month. So, um, but I really do appreciate everyone who donated. And any amount of money is is a good amount of money to um, to to help the folks over at Boston Children's do all the amazing work they did. So thank you everyone who contributed to that. It, it really does mean a lot, and it's my, my one of my favorite parts of the year being able to give back a little bit. So, you guys, uh, I will start with uh, congratulations to Wild Nine for taking the listener series crown for this expansions. And uh, thank you to everyone who was able to finish out that top eight just before the expansion launch. Uh, so, and congratulations, that was a very stacked field. And Wild Nine was able to, to take that crown and now has the uh, gold name in the Discord, <laughs> which uh, a couple expansions ago when I, I had that, I was very excited. That I was like most excited about the gold name, but also <laughs> all of the bragging rights. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, also, Coin Concede to uh, Doctor 3, which is a, a great Hearthstone podcast. Uh, they are having me on as a guest on Tuesday. So I'm really, if you if you need podcasts uh, while, you, while we're off or just in general in your life, uh, they're a great podcast to check out. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Queen and to uh, Wicked Good for pioneering that we're we're making like short highlight videos of parts of the podcast, and uh, I've also been doing some of some of the gameplay. But the the main ones that we'll be doing are of the podcast, and we're excited about those. And that was really a lot of work that you've been spearheading. So thank you. Uh, and finally, Queen and Seed to John Bray and to and to my stutter at the last second has been acting up. Coin concede to John Bray and to Baby Bear. Uh, they got married. And so congratulations. All right. <laughs> Our uh, first couple of, of Hearthstone, potentially. <laughs> and Yeah, well, now that Dog and Hafu, like, you know, mostly play other stuff. They play Battlegrounds <laughs> mostly, still. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our first couple of, of standard Hearthstone. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we shall say uh so yeah that's very exciting all right and that is my my long list of coin conceit <laughs> uh well i've got a couple quick ones uh first to morgul who coin conceded to me on ladder during the stream on tuesday 
and then to Pilot, who I faced earlier today, and I kind of had a suspicion it was not going to go well because Pilot was on Sif Mage, and that <laughs> does not go great for my Highlander Blood Decay. I, I, it's it's harder, I think, to uh, to disrupt that one with you know the the rat the entire patchwork stuff. It is just. There's a lot of ways to like hold on to minions in your hand and stuff to to protect. So, uh, yeah, we did end up winning that one, but it, it's always fun to to face someone where I'm like, wait, I recognize that person. Uh, <laughs> so, quick and see to pilot, and uh, and to both of you for again, m maybe I mentioned this last week, but but yeah, just it's been so cool having you two uh, take the initiative on uh, this this new content with the shorts. It, it's just. I feel like we're we're bringing Clan Conceit into the modern era. Yeah, finally, we're we're, we're uh, dragging but... ourselves into the 20th century. Damn it! And <laughs> <laughs> which is you know tough for us, uh, but uh, we're gonna figure out this whole TikTok and shorts thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one way or another. Like you know, the, if I have to, if I have to enlist my children to teach us how to how to use modern social media, so damn, so so be it. We'll do it, but. It actually works pretty well for podcasts, I think. Like since we do yeah. record with video, just being able to take, uh, you know, punchy lines and and, and put them in uh, in a short, so people can be like, "Oh, hey, I wonder what that's about," and, and maybe give the full show a listen. Yeah, there's the number one thing that shorts are great for is like funneling people over to your main stuff. So yeah, hopefully uh, that ends up panning out, but. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But um, so until next time, you know, enjoy the Thanksgiving week. We'll see you the uh, be I guess is that beginning of December, end of end of November. I don't know. It's the end of November, okay. beginning of December. Uh, but until then, keep calm and uh, summon your ogres. And if you see us on ladder, coin concede. Coin concede. Coin concede.